Welcome to Billion Dollar Startup, where we bring you visionaries and disruptors who have started, scaled, sold, or invested in a billion dollar startup, also known as a unicorn. We also feature tech founders who are building the next billion dollar startup. Billion Dollar Startup is a unique podcast sponsored by DragonX Capital, the venture capital firm that concentrates on seed and early stage tech companies with the X Factor. Welcome back to Billion Dollar Startup. Today we have another CEO from one of our active portfolio companies through DragonX Capital. We have the CEO from Vertify. So Matt, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Super excited. We're going to dive into talking about revenue and revenue ops. So maybe share with us a little bit your story and your background and, and how did you get into the industry? Absolutely. That's great. Well, let me start by saying thanks, reiterating that. Thanks for having me. Uh, pleasure to do this and obviously a pleasure to work with you um, outside of the podcast world. But uh, no, so, so my background, I would say, is a little different uh, as an entrepreneur, as a leader than most. Um, I'm formerly educated in both business and music. And so I spent uh, I spent many years uh, singing um, opera professionally. Oh wow, uh, which which you know, had its highs and its lows. Um, Is that why of... you, your voice sounds so good? Yeah. <laughs> so, so sexy voice is what it there is. You go. That's, what, that's what I'm talking about. No, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I guess it's, it's trained for that, but uh, mm. I'm not doing it anymore. Uh, I did it for many years, loved it. Um, it was a passion of mine. I learned a lot. I learned a lot that has influenced who I am today as mm. a leader. Um, mm. I've been told no as a singer more times than you could shake a stick at. Right. And uh, that certainly has put me um, into a position as an entrepreneur and as a leader um, to kind of take on what I'm taking on today. So that that kind of through that, I was very fortunate to always kind of work both sides of the brain. I worked at companies that allowed me to, um, uh, you know, stretch that singing muscle and, and travel the world and kind of work both sides. So um, grew up in the revenue uh, leadership and operations leadership world. Uh, and, and through that process, I really noticed that there were a lot of problems, uh, with, with revenue team alignment, number mm -hmm. one, and with, um, the operations of revenue team data. And, uh, through that, you know, it was time for me to say, okay, it's time for me to do my thing. Um, and, and I was living in New York at the time, uh, and, uh, went on a journey because my, my, my business background is, has a lot to do with transitioning businesses from services businesses to product businesses. So productize. Yeah, that's right. To productize businesses. And, um, and with that, uh, you know, I, I kind of, I, I leaned into that and I said, I have a blueprint for this. There's, there's some good things here. Um, let's, let's do that again. And so I started looking for businesses, um, you know, that were kind of in the world that I was looking to get into that had a product, maybe didn't realize they had a product or had started to try to push that in market. Um, and I found a great company in Austin that was a services-based business. Um, and they were doing marketing automation, CRM implementations and migrations. Um, and so they had this kind of tool set that they had built. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, coming into that was able to take the business, the services business from them and transition it to a product business. Yeah. Um, and, and that comes with a lot of change. Uh, we changed the entire team and the entire methodology and everything else. Um, but really took it because there was an underlying product there um, that took those two things that I mentioned. It took the, the alignment challenge that existed um, and the, the operations of the data, um, the challenge that existed there, and married the two and brought them together. So that's really, that's really where Vertify was born. My co-founder was in Austin. I was in New York, so I moved here, and we, we started the business um, from that perspective, Wayne Lopez is my co-founder and he is, uh, he's kind of the product visionary product mind. Yeah. Right. And, and I come from the business side and I'm the idea, um, visionary and the, and the, and the business side leader. So, um, that's really kind of where the vision was born. And the, the vision ultimately is to reinvent how people share customer data, mm. how they share knowledge and, uh, and inspire that revenue to mm. ultimately grow. And so that vision influences our mission, yes. which is which is to help mid-market and enterprise companies streamline revenue operations and scale faster. 
Um, Maybe let's share yeah. with the audiences in case they don't know what RevOps is. It's, it's like a, for some, it's like a new buzzword, right? Is it, is it my oh, sales yeah. team? Is it like, how does it work? Because uh, yeah. I, I wasn't familiar with that term just a number of years ago, right? Yeah. It's only a few years ago that we now, we, within my own company, we have a RevOps team, right? Yep. Yep. Just maybe yep. educate the audience a bit on that. Yeah. So, so I'll take a step back and kind of say, okay, you know, we always, right, had an eye on alignment yes. and the need to fix that, that revenue team alignment. But COVID and a few other factors kind of accelerated that yes. and kind of, kind of uh, brought the star that is automation to start rising a little bit quicker. Mm -hmm. um, and, and many businesses uh, out there right now, right, they're looking to cut costs, they're looking to optimize um for not only scale but for survivability and yes. and to compete in market and automation is obviously the, what we see as being a a big key to that mm -hmm. um data is ultimately a mid-market and enterprise business's biggest asset right mm -hmm. um but only if you can take that data and turn it into information um and that that's why this is kind of the perfect storm leading into revops as we see it. So let me start with what RevOps is not, yes. because I think that that's a big deal. I think we, we there's so many definitions of what RevOps is. A lot, a lot of mis misconception as well. A lot of misconception. So, mm -hmm. so let me just start what RevOps is not. And obviously this is me and this is our perspective at Vertify, but it's not new, okay? Um, it's just been siloed, right? It's not new. Um, it's not alignment. Alignment is a result. It's not a methodology. It's not a fancy word for sales ops or marketing ops. Um, and it cannot be started quickly or stopped quickly, right? Mm -hmm. So that's really what it's not. Now, what RevOps is, it is the science of revenue growth, okay? Mm -hmm. so, so let's just take a baseball analogy for a second. A lot of baseball fans, I'm a baseball fan. Um, Moneyball, right? Moneyball, replicate and repeat a winning season. That's what it's all about, right? Mm -hmm. Through processes that you're building, to uh, repeat a winning season and also developing tools to disseminate that data. Mm. Um, and that's, that's really, that's what RevOps is for the business, the science of revenue growth. You're trying to replicate and repeat a winning strategy for revenue growth. You're trying to build processes around that. Um, and you're developing tools to disseminate that data and automate that data. Mm. Um, and that's really where Vertify fits in as this RevOps automation system of record for RevOps teams to help them disseminate and turn data into trusted information. Mm -hmm. So that gives you an idea. It's all about revenue growth and, and you know, you're, you're folding the concept of um, RevOps across sales, marketing, and customer success. Um, and you're putting tools in place and processes in place um, to help that entire umbrella work together uh, to achieve growth. That makes sense. I think within my, my own journey, my own company, at first, you know, you've got a sales team and then you have all this data and then I, I brought on automation specialists, right? And then all the CRM stuff had grown from millions, tens of millions, right? Multiple tens of millions. And I didn't even know we need, like now with all this data, it's like <laughs> too much data. And how do we, how do we make sense of it? How do we make decisions? Yeah. From a, like, it's like a pile of stuff. Sure. But we want to be better. We want to, like I said, replicate, kind of repeat successful actions. Yeah, right, right. Obviously, you want to learn from that data yeah. uh, and yeah. make decisions. But what you have the data to make decisions on, off of, right? But, yes. but if you can't trust it, which is a big problem, all Correct. that data can turn into a mess. Um, yeah. It doesn't have to be that way. Mm -hmm. um, there are ways to do this through people, process, and technologies technology that uh, allows you to be successful. Maybe Matt, share with us how maybe a, a case study, a client example, what problems they're having, they, they come to you, uh, they yeah. use the software, and that ha how that has impacted the bottom line. Yeah, so ultimately, um, you know, these companies, every company we work with, right, we're, we're, we're very focused on the mid-market enterprise business, right? Yes. You, can start, you look at growth companies, so, so north of 10 million in revenue, as they're scaling up, they're going to have a sales team, they're going to have a marketing team, they're going to have a customer success team, right? Yes. Um, they're going to have siloed applications. So you're going to have multiple marketing apps um, doing multiple different things, but just take your automation platform as a start. So Marketo, HubSpot, Pardot, whatever that is, yes. right? You're going to you're going to have that. Your sales team is going to have their CRM, 
right? That system of record for the business. So yeah. Salesforce, whatever, but they're also going to have sales enablement. Yeah. They're going to have a sales loft or outreach. Um, your customer success apps, right? They're going to have those, right? We use vitally internally, but there's many different customer success apps that are out there. Well, what happens is, is all of that information starts to get siloed, remain siloed. And for the mid-market enterprise business, you know, every application claims that they have a native integration. Yeah. And, and those natives fall short when you start getting into the, to the, to the, to the bigger businesses, right? Yeah. Um, custom objects, custom fields. Tell me one, name one company in the mid-market that's a $100 million business that doesn't have a custom Salesforce instance, right? Mm -hmm. um, and when that starts happening, those natives can't keep up. Or, or you're a business that's acquiring other businesses, and now you have 10 Salesforce instances spread throughout the globe. And all of those, those teams and those systems deserve and, and need um, fundamentally to be able to work off of the same information. And so our customers um, that are out there, customers like Tyson Foods and others, they're, 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 they're using us to pull that data into one place mm -hmm. and then set up their workflows for better lead management workflows, better upsell, cross-sell workflows. Um, so that data is shared amongst teams in real time so that they can make better, more informed, timely decisions around those different aspects, right? Whether it's pre-sales or post-sales, whether it's retention or not, it's all of that data that is very critical to run your business uh, and to do it effectively. And, and met through, like is with Vertify, there are many aspects in terms of sales and revenue, right? Why you chose to kind of focus on just RevOps automation, like why you choose to like this particular niche? Yeah, well, I think it, I think it's number one important as an entrepreneur, as a leader, uh, growing a business to be focused. Mm -hmm. I think I think focus matters. Um, if you're trying to be everything to everybody, uh, good luck. I'm not going to say you're not going to make it, but good luck. Um, yes. I've seen that written, uh, and sure, some people can achieve that. But we we decided to really focus, and and on top of that, the the market size is is huge yes. um, specifically and growing, in growing exactly. and growing. I mean, when we started, it was, we, we had coined this idea, this phrase, Wayne and myself around the RevOps revolution. We said, eventually yeah. there's going to be a RevOps revolution yeah. and, and, you know, it's accelerating now and it's growing. And so, so that's why it's focus. It's, it's um, the problem is big enough. Uh, it's, it's plenty big for us to grow with it. Um, the need for, we've also seen this evolution of, you know, early on, there was a need for these growing, scaling SMBs and mid-market companies only to, to get rid of kind of the IT, um, you know, uh, side of things. And they wanted to own their business. They needed to own their business. They couldn't, they were waiting in line with IT. Yes. Um, well, that's changing across the spectrum. Now we're talking to billion dollar enterprises that are saying, hey, IT is in line saying, hey, I need, I need something that can solve this. And a solution set for business as opposed to a tool set for IT. Yeah. Um, and so that's where we are. There's a lot of, you know, historic IPaaS integration platform as a service players, Informatica, Boomi, that are very technical applications that work well as a tool set for IT, but don't translate as a solution set for business. And, and that's why we built it the way we did. It's interesting because part of the reasons why we have made a decision to, to back notify is from a number of years, I would see, con I mean, there are conferences on like sales, of course, on marketing. And then I noticed there are now conferences on just rev ops, right? Sure. And then yeah. companies, they start having these positions, which they didn't have before, like director yep. of rev ops, right? Totally. EP of rev ops. Well, we didn't, yep. they didn't have those before. Well, that didn't exist. There's, there's a need, there, there's a need for it. There's a, a problem within the company that they, they need a dedicated team or a dedicated person, a leader to go just focus on that. 100%. So now across the board, like the bigger companies, they all have that. Now I think it trickles down to now even the mid mid sized companies. Okay, we need we need a tool like this. A hundred percent. And I equate it to look at DevOps ten years ago. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Look at that. And and that's where we are. We're at the beginning of RevOps, and and being that RevOps automation system of record. Uh, is really where we see and and being kind of on the forefront of that. It's it's a it's a reinvention of the way we think as business leaders, mm. um, and and the automation, the technology has to has to match that as well, and so that's where we're at.
And when you work with B2B companies, what do you see they struggle most with in, when it comes to like automation? Yeah, so good question. And, and there's a maturity curve here, okay? Yeah. So, so um, in the beginning, it's literally, hey, I need to connect system A and system B. Yeah, that's it. That's what so they, they talk about. to each other at least. Yeah. That's their that's their problem, right? Yeah. Uh, and and that is their initiative. Yeah. Connect this, right? Yeah. And then it's it's our job, and it's the industry's job to educate. Hey, that's just the start. And so there's this mature maturity curve of start here, connection, collection of data. That's the first part, right? And then you have to evolve into okay, well, if we've just connected these systems, if we've now connected these systems. How many workflows can I look at rolling into mm. this vast data set to nice. automate? And how can I orchestrate and schedule this information? And how can I keep up good data hygiene and cleansing on the fly between these systems? Yes. And, and so it's an evolution. It starts with connection and then it turns into, oh my goodness, I didn't realize just how powerful this was and this could be. Um, and they usually, it's about week three of onboarding where they say, whoa. Right. Um, there's more here. And then it's our job to nurture that and to to build that into the product so that they can have better usability long term and, and kind of grow with that and and grow with that realization and become better rev ops professionals, um, you know, as as they move forward. Mm. And just again, for audience, exactly how does then Vertify work in terms of a software? Yeah. So in terms of a software, um, we immediately connect into we, a lot of our customers are um, either either moving to different systems or they have systems in place and they're siloed they're buying something for the first time like an automation platform like a marketing automation platform or changing crms or whatever mm -hmm. and so when they come into us and we we, we launch um, vertify automatically connects into those applications your your systems that that are involved right so it could just be starting off with with marketing automation and CRM, that could be the first step. Or you could be layering in your support applications, your CS applications, um, your sales enablement, whatever it might be, finance. Um, but we start where they need to start, right? Where they're where they are on that maturity curve. Um, we automatically pull the data in. Um, nothing for the customer to do on that front. And then we work through an onboarding process uh, with them. Um, with, through our onboarding partners, we've built a, a ecosystem of partners um, that that onboard the Vertify platform alongside our customers, and it's really a training exercise more than anything. Mm, um, nice. And and we're training them how to use it, how to be kind of Vertify automators. Mm. Um, and it's a it's a mapping exercise based on your business processes. How are we going to map the data um, to to your specific needs and workflows that you want to accomplish? And of course, there are templates and there are things that roll into it to, to start us off, but everybody has a little bit of a configuration change and that's what yes. onboarding is all about. Yes. And so we do that. We get them, we get them, we're, we're believers in a quick time to value. Um, and so the application was built for that. So zero coding. And then once it's live um, and your data is flowing between applications, um, it's literally um, kind of set to the side and you go in there to create more workflows, new workflows to optimize the workflows that you have in place. Um, and, and that's really kind of how it works. So we make Marketo better by getting it the data that it needs. We make NetSuite better by getting it the data that it needs, but mm. ultimately getting it in the hands of the people um, that can do something with that data. Uh, and that's really, that's really kind of so how we're not works. competing with all these other, other tools. We, we it's, it's complimentary, right? Complimentary, hundred percent. Yep. Yeah, that's what we yeah. want. And yeah. do you find it in the beginning? What 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 were some of the challenges? Because I guess a few years ago when when you started, uh, was it difficult to penetrate the market and educate people on, hey, here's why you need Vertify, or was sure. it was it like, oh no, it's actually quite easy. I you show it to them, they kind of get it. Like, what was that like? Yeah. So so you know, I'll kind of uh, take a different approach to answer this, but we we entered the market a little bit differently. Um, because of that challenge that we saw. We saw there being a barrier to entry because the education wasn't there in markets. Yes, Meaning if we went direct outbound um, to our consumer at that point. Because pe people don't even know they need it. Correct. Yeah. And so what we said is let's start, and I'll get into where we started here, 
Uh, and then let's start, let's be on an education, let's be on an education journey of mm. educating a market. Um, coming from a marketing background, thought leadership and education is huge for me, right? Yeah. And so educating the direction of the market, being the educator of, of automation, data automation is who we really kind of fundamentally are. And so in the beginning, instead of going direct, we said, let's start with channel partners, right? Mm -hmm. And so what, what I mean by that is once again, we make these systems better. And mm -hmm. so if, if Marketo is a great rocket ship, mm -hmm. uh, but needs fuel to launch that mm -hmm. fuel being data, um, Hey, Marketo, we should be working together. We yeah. should be that data refinery that fuels you and fuels your customers and allows that system to really take off. Mm -hmm. And so that was the initial pitch to them, uh, before they were acquired by Adobe. Yeah. And we jumped on board with them. And, and then now it's, it's brought into about five very specific um, distribution channel partnerships. Mm -hmm. uh, we're sold on Adobe Paper. Um, so, you were know, they owned by Vista before? They were. They were. Right. And, yeah. and we, were, we were a part of that mix then. Uh, and then when Adobe acquired them, we transitioned into Adobe, which was great. Oh, wow. Um, cool. Big shift. And so now there's a ton of expansion going on with Adobe and what we're doing there. But the channel partners were very pivotal in the beginning for us mm. because of that, right? Because the consumer had been fed this marketing automation vision for 10 years at that yes, point. Yes. They knew what marketing automation was and they knew they needed it. Yeah. And so, so we basically hitched a ride and said, mm. well, if you're going to do that, you're going to need this too. Mm. And, and so we've been selling alongside Adobe and HubSpot. Um, and Which is a Elba. very smart, smart move. It's a very smart move. Well, you know, it, it kind of goes back to the, hey, we're transitioning from service to product. Mm -hmm. How do we do this? We bootstrapped for many years. Mm -hmm. How do we do this in a way that makes sense? And we, we can't, can't go build a huge outbound team. Plus, we didn't feel like it was right. We didn't feel like the message would resonate and we, we'd mm -hmm. fall flat and it would hit too much education required mm -hmm. in the early days. So, so now we're in a place where we're starting to, we're, we're continuing to expand partnerships. Mm -hmm. Wayne is in charge of partnership expansion yes. here at Vertify and he's building every week. I feel like we're signing a new partner. Um, so there's there's new partnerships coming in. We're already a global business, yes. so reaching those partnerships and we're able to to extend our partnership reach through the partnerships we already have, nice. right? So through and then Adobe, they already see the new partners because say, hey, you have worked with all these correct. amazing channel partners, like correct, that's credibility. right? Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, and and we've had Adobe yeah. um, reps and senior executives say to their other services partners, hey, you should be working with Vertify. Yeah. And that connection is made. And then, you know, nice. the handoff is there. So nice. we're continuing to expand channel and, 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 and all the while we've been slowly investing in education. Mm. Um, and that education results in SEO, which yes. results in inbound. Right. And so right. <clears throat> no, no, not by any means are we where we will be or need to be or want to be um, at yeah. scale, but we are now investing more in that. Mm -hmm. And we see, we're starting to see the fruits of the inbound efforts. In fact, we're going to be launching a whole new addition digitally on our website with use nice. cases and everything else in the next 30 days. So there's a lot of work there. Yes. Um, and then we're starting to very slowly experiment with, with the outbound demand gen aspects mm. of what we do. Yeah, it's beautiful and order. So, yeah. so three, le three legs to that stool and we're, we're working through them accordingly. Um, and we, we think that those are going to be the areas that, you know, from start to finish, really start to, to, you know, help us scale rapidly. I think it's, it's, it's exact, it's the right strategy. A lot of the founders, um, that we talk to, we, we tell them the same thing. I mean, an educated client is a better client. And yeah. if you can in, in, in integrate some sort of thought leadership and education within what you do, it just positions you as the authority and expert, right? If Correct. you educate them on automation or rev ops where they need the software it's kind of very easy to bring up yeah. back in conversations hey you are the one who educates me on this yeah of course i would buy your software it's quite yep. simple right yeah totally i mean hubspot did a great job yeah yes setting, setting that blueprint for us as marketers i mean i yeah. saw it early on as a marketer and i was like man this this is great like this yeah. is repeatable. You can do this, and they they did a nice job of that. And they did. Um, I think we're we benefit from some of that success that they had there. Actually, I had uh, on the uh, my other show, I had a uh, uh, Brian, the CEO of uh, of HubSpot. I've interviewed him as awesome. well. So he shares his journey, and it's exactly that, right? They, yep. And I love uh, his his vision, his 
he walks the talk. He talks about yeah. content marketing. He talks about yeah. inbound. That's what they do. It's what they do. They're like exactly it's like they they do. they do what they're telling you to do, and that's what works for their business. They use the same tool. Bingo. Which Bingo. is amazing, right? I love that. I love yep. that. What All were right. some of the challenges uh, when you started Vertify, and how did you overcome those? Yeah. So, I mean, there, there's, there's multiple things, right? There was that education piece. It was, Hey, yes. how are we going to do this? Um, yes. That was, that was a factor. There's no doubt. Um, there was the fact that it's, it's not easy to transition. It's possible. And, and the benefits are great. It's not easy to transition a services business to product business. Yes. It's, it's, um, it's, a, it's, it's a process. I mean, it's, it's a process and, and, you know, it requires um, making hard decisions when it comes to people. Yeah. Um, yes. you know, it, but, but you have to have the right mindset, uh, in that, in that. So that was a challenge. Um, and it took, I would say about a year and a half to really get us to where we felt like, Hey, we are a product minded product focused business. Mm. Um, you know, I think COVID taught us a lot too. some of the mm. challenges there. Um, not to mention, do, we had did a, you, do you think COVID helped the business or hurt the business? I think it's helping it now. Ah. Um, so in the middle of it, hard to see you know, where it was helping, where it was hurting. Now we did, frankly, we had some hospitality and, and retail customers that just completely went under. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so that in the middle of it hurt us. Right. Yes. But we were, we're very, you know, we're, we're focused on the long term. We just went into bootstrap mode and we said, Hey, we've done this before. Let's do it again. And, and we, we'll, we'll get through it. And, and ultimately let's just be there for our customers and help them get through it. Yes. Yes. Um, but you know, another challenge we faced is at the beginning of COVID in February of 2020, we acquired another business, yeah. um, you know, and that business turned out just like many acquisitions, uh, they're, they're not, you know, what they're, what they're portrayed as, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of times. And then you fall into COVID and the things that affected that business was a data business. So selling data, contact data, mm -hmm. um, and, and that took a, took a bit of a hit. And so, you know, we had to make some tough decisions through that process and everything else to to fold some of those things uh, and and move away, move beyond um, them. But all the right decisions in the long run. And and we've made a lot of mistakes. I think that's that's part of being a a uh, entrepreneur. Yes. But you have to learn from those mistakes and you have to be able to admit those mistakes. And as a leader, um, it's your job to own them and make sure your team knows they're on you. Right. And so that's been a big part of it for us. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I think that's been, we had challenges, but we've had some great milestones along the way as well. Mm -hmm. And what's your outlook for like, say this year or next couple of years? Yeah. So, so obviously looking to, looking to double revenue this year, that's mm -hmm. kind of, uh, where we're at looking to, looking to double revenue and, uh, because we're bootstrapped uh, yes. for so many years, we also have a mind and an eye towards profitability to own our our, our future a little bit, mm -hmm. right? To own our valuation, to put ourselves in a really good position, mm -hmm. uh, to work with the right investors, right? Yes. I mean, it's very important. Um, working with the right people, uh, people are what make our product successful. People are what make our business successful. And it's the same thing with investors. Um, you know, they're a part of that too. So uh, yeah, that that's... That's kind of how I see it, but we're 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 trying to set ourselves up to a path to profitability over the next twelve to eighteen months, which mm -hmm. put us in a position of, um, okay, what's next? We're going to go um, from doubling to uh, through the multiple distribution channels that we now have in place uh, to to much more rapid growth from there. Mm -hmm. And we're we're happy to be part of it. We're happy to 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 back you to be part of, you know, the team and to invest in you. And the question, because a little behind the scenes story, because when <laughs> when I when we talk with you, one of the things that I think impresses us the most, and we say this on the show quite a few times, we we don't invest in the product, we invest in the people, we invest in teams, right? Um, and you know, if you remember, we we went through an exercise of looking at the personality type, the team that you hire, and things like that. Yep. I yep. was ta talking with my partner um, Ivan and said, "Hey, Matt." hires very well like the people <laughs> with with the with the profile with the personality this is a this is a good team just share with us like how did you build that team and what's what's your leadership style yeah uh man the leadership style thing is i think a loaded question but how, how do we build the team um so I'm a big believer in uh, the book Traction, Gino Wickman, EOS. Oh, yeah, um, yes, yes. Which I have also interviewed on the show. <laughs> okay, great. Yes. Brilliant. So I'm a big believer. We're a big believer. And, and um, 
how have we hired? Well, I think, I think the fundamental reason why we have such an amazing team from, mm -hmm. from, you know, um, throughout the entire spectrum of our, of our company, yeah. um, is because we, we hire, uh, we retain, we fire, we promote based mm -hmm. on our core values. Mm -hmm. That's it. Right. You're measured by that. Your, your job description, what you're doing on a daily basis, your resume, that's table six, right? Mm -hmm. What we're talking about is, are you living up to those core values? Are you going to live up to those core values? Can you? Mm -hmm. And we go through a pretty robust uh, hiring process. Um, you're going to meet with about five people before you um, come back to me. Um, and there's going to be a, a so huge do you do emphasis. multiple, like do they interview, like so the first interview with two or three people, a second and third kind of thing? Yeah, it, it's in fact, because of our scale right now, I can still handle being the first. Oh, so okay. I'm typically the first layer. Uh, and so so uh, that's not always going to be the case, mm -hmm. but hopefully we have a good process in place um, by then. Yes. But but for now, I'm the first layer. And then it goes to two. Um, the next meeting is with two um, executives. executives. The next yeah. the next meeting is with um, two others within the organization. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's usually one more follow-up that is, that is, uh, driven, um, from the, the, the meetings of four, basically, mm -hmm. um, where there's, there's an exercise, there's a follow-up, there's a request that we ask of them. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's, it comes from them. And then there's the last one, which swings back to me, um, oh. and a lot of debate internally. And, and we move fast. I mean, those things are all going to happen in one week, but, but ultimately, um, it comes back to me. And that's when the kind of rubber meets the road when it comes to the values. And my request to them in, in meeting one is here are our values. I'm not going to tell you what they are. I'm not going to tell you what they mean. I'm not going to tell you what they stand for. I want you to tell me what they stand for. What it and means to you, right? Kind of thing. What it means to you. Yeah. What does yeah. it mean to you? And so that's very important. Um, and that's, So you that's, do that in the first interview? Do that in the first interview. Beautiful. Yep. I love that. Yeah. Yep. Because we yep. do the same thing. So I, I can resonate. Yeah. So that's good. Very nice. Yeah. And I think we've just been blessed, man. We, we just, we just have some amazing people. There's Austin is a great place to build a business. Um, for sure. For sure. Um, but now we have, we have people in Houston and Nashville and South America. I mean, we're, we're building um, a global team and, mm. and they're just, they're just all rock stars. I mean, you can't do this without, without them. I mean, the, the product and technology is, is a component, but it's the yeah. people that drive the success and, and it's the people that are listening to the customer. Uh, and that's really important. Yeah, and it seems to me that uh, with Vertify, once you once you, you're helping them, of course, data automation. I mean, there who knows what other needs they might have, right? right. Like from there, right. that's where we can add value, right? Yeah, yeah. When you talk about like uh, lifetime value of the customer, and yeah. you know, for us, it starts with hey, let's just add value. Let's just mm -hmm. add more value, and that results in positive NRR for us yes. to be where we're at and to have a positive NRR business and to have a, a, uh, a gross retention higher than 98%, yeah. you know, at our stage, incredible, that's incredible. incredible. That's, yeah. that's why though, you know, and it's because we're, we're adding value. We're leaning on the, our values, um, and, and leaning into the customer from that perspective. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a very, very sticky product. hundred percent, hundred percent. What? Yeah. Yeah. Like once they start using, unless like the couple of clients, like you said, like during COVID, they actually went under. That's a different story. Like that's different not, story. Not, no, that's not within our control. But most Correct. businesses, if they're going to be around and they they are growing, they're growing sales, mm -hmm. they need Vertify. Correct. What like we you, will you're see, already in it. Like it, it, they can't right. run it without. What we will often see is they're they're transitioning from one marketing automation platform to another as they mm. scale yes. or, you know, cause HubSpot historically has been such a great SMB focused, uh, yeah. Yeah. you know, application. Whereas, you know, Marketo really takes over in the mid market, very robust. Yeah. And so we'll see those transitions, but those transitions um, enable us to continue to add more value, right? We're going to help you transition. Let's migrate you from HubSpot to Marketo or, or mm -hmm. NetSuite to Salesforce, and let's continue to help you flourish. And, and mm -hmm. so we kind of sit in between as that glue, which is nice. Yeah, we, we, we remind you of the conversation I had with Brian from HubSpot. He said, uh, of, they, of course, they have certain sectors and avatars sure. they focus on, but HubSpot also wants, I mean, of course, you know, they compete with And Salesforce. they are. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. they are. They, they're upgrading that. They want to be able to take it from like 
Yeah. One like mom and pop, one person, all the way to a big massive yep. corporation. They want to be able to be able to do all that, right? Which I think That's they're right. heading in that direction. I think they're they're totally heading in that direction. But but I, I know it because I see it in the evidence. Like we work with a lot of HubSpot um RevOps agencies yeah, RevOps, yes. um, or service partners. Yes. And and they're offering service and we they sell, they white label, they sell our automation. Yes. Um, through that. And, and we're seeing through them, them saying, Hey, HubSpot's th the growth of, of mid-market enterprise coming into their application is huge. And, huge. Yeah. and, and that's where our, our product really sits. So they're, they're kind of, um, rev ops, um, uh, platform within, uh, within HubSpot works yeah. great for the mid market. I mean the, the SMB market, and then we can help supplement that for the enterprises as they scale as well. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, can you maybe talk a little bit about like what's the 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 milestone you accomplished since the kind of the beginning of the company, like through the last few years? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, I'll talk through a little bit of that. So I think there, it's interesting, right? Going from transitioning service to product, taking a product business from zero to five, five mm. to a million plus, you know, uh, those all have different stages. And yeah. so those milestones of revenue, um, I think all have kind of this um, different focus on different aspects of what we need from the team. So there was a different team going from zero to five and then five, 500 and then 500 to a million yeah. um, and then a million to two. And, and now taking it to that kind of um, $10 million um, threshold is very important as we kind of transition through that. Um, and those have been big, big milestones. I like to look at the business as hey, different phases, right? 2018 to 2020 was kind of phase one. 2020 to 2022 um, was phase two. And really Q3 of 22 was start of phase three. And, and it went from, hey, we're providing a connection. We're providing an integration uh, to we're providing a org integration and kind of cleansing engine with some analytics and reporting built mm. in. Now we're providing a RevOps automation suite with, integration, orchestration, automation, cleansing and hygiene, and reporting capabilities on top of that. And, mm -hmm. and, and phase three is off to a good start, right? Record breaking Q3 and Q4 and, and looking to go into uh, 2023 with that as well. Um, so, so good milestones for us since, mm -hmm. since 2018, really um, crossing different thresholds, some steps back from time to time, right? In 2020, taking a couple steps back to take, take more steps forward. Um, you know, and, and that's kind of where we're at. I think also in, in the whole venture capital world, a lot of, a lot of doom and gloom, a lot of the, a lot of VCs, they are a bit more kind of sitting, just kind of waiting what, what's yep. going on. Uh, I think Ivan and I, we have a different take. Yep. Uh, I think if any tech companies, if they've survived through COVID, it tells us a lot. Yeah. Right? So we are actually yeah. looking to, to increase our investment, to invest in more companies in the next couple of years. Uh, yep. A lot of people, they are, well, I guess I think the thing Warren Buffett said that you want to be, you want to be, you want to be greedy when other people are fearful, right? That's right. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Uh, yeah, totally. And we don't see that because we back like great founders like yourself, right? Uh, yep. For our listeners, let's say they are founders like yourself. Uh, what advice would you have for them now you build Vertify up to this point? Yeah. Um, so uh, I would say, first and foremost, be the customer and be with the customer. Mm. Okay. So, so put yourself in the customer's seat, be the customer. Um, what are they needing? Listen to the customer as CEO, right? I can't be on every customer call. Um, but I'll tell you this, I'm listening to every customer call recording. Mm. Um, and I'm watching every um, Slack channel that we have that's talking about the customer. Mm. Learn what the customer needs. Um, listen to the customer. Do less talking. Do more listening. Um, I would say I would say that is that is very very important. Um, number two, invest in the people. Uh, you know, if you're just starting a business, if you're invest in people. Um, that that means sure, um, investing in them and giving them what they need to be successful. Um, but just be there for your people, be there for your team, listen to them. Um, and on top of that, build a team that's different than you, right? Diversity mm. is critical. Yes. Um, you know, and, and so, so bring on people that are diverse and, and have different opinions than you. 
um, across the board. That's going to be really, really smart uh, for you to do. And then lastly, I would say sharpen your emotional intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really important uh, to be self-aware. Uh, and to see as CEO, one of my biggest jobs is to try to see around corners, right? Yes. Um, and you have to have really high emotional intelligence to do that. And you, you ultimately, um, you need to invest in that, uh, and you need to invest in being intellectually honest with that emotional intelligence. Um, you know, have people around you, business coaches and those that you trust, uh, that are going to speak truth into what you can't see your blind spots mm -hmm. and then listen to what they say. Mm -hmm. um, that's very, very important to do. Um, so I would, I would say those things are, are critical. Great. And of course, seeking advisors, listening to mentors, big time people have like a hundred percent. It's, it's, it's a huge belief in that. So, um, for our listeners, if they want to find out a little bit more about Vertify, what's the best way to get in touch with you or maybe even get in touch with your company? Yeah. So, so vertify.com is, uh, is a great place to go. Uh, uh, and Vertify Data um, on Twitter, Vertify Data on LinkedIn. Those are great areas to get in touch uh, with all of us. You can email me directly at matt at vertify.com. I love hearing from listeners and, and anybody interested talking about uh, RevOps and automation. Whether you're interested in the product, whether we can help you with that, doesn't matter. Um, I love meeting entrepreneurs, talking to them. Um, and, and yeah, if you're in Austin or, or in the Bay Area or in Denver, uh, I, I'm there quite a bit uh, with partners and stuff. So would love to meet in person. So email me and, and we can go from there. Mm -hmm. If you want to geek out on web ops, you know what to do now. <laughs> That's right. You know what to do. Well, Matt, That's thank right. you for being on the show. It's, it's been great to hear how you're doing. I know 2023, we're going to kick some ass. That's right. Uh, look forward. Um, anything that we can do to add value to help, just let us know. We're always here to help. Thanks. I really appreciate it. Thanks for this. And, and uh, I think one of the things I'll leave you with this, you guys um, showed us very early on that you, you care about the people mm -hmm. um, and, and you invest in the people. You've said that already on here, but, but yes. um, it's, it's critical. And, um, and we appreciate that. We appreciate you from that perspective. Um, and I know if I email you guys or need anything, um, you're there for that. So I really appreciate it. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate it. Thank you. We appreciate you joining us for this episode of Billion Dollar Startup. Be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to the show. And visit DragonX.com for more resources based on today's topic, as well as for access to previous episodes. That's DragonX.com. Thank you for listening.